Okay, let's start our class. So, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, Lashi, we can. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, so first, let me refresh your memory on what we have learned from the last four credit hours. So, from the first chapter, we have learned what is soil and what is soil profile and the soil horizon or soil layers. Uh, and then we uh, learned the soil functions, six aspects of soil functions as a material or as a natural body. So next we'll uh, introduce some soil basic properties like soil texture, structure, and organic, soil organic matter like that. So we'll start from the mineral constituents of soils. So last, last class we have uh, learned that the soil mineral have three different size of uh, mineral particles. The largest particle named sand, and then a smaller one named silt, and then the smallest one named clay. So soil mineral particles are consisted, uh, are consist of sand, silt, and clay. And the proportion for each size particles, uh, if the proportion are different, then the soil have may have different uh, property uh, because the sand is relatively larger and it's gritty, uh, but silt is a bit smaller and it's uh, sm smooth. It's, it's, uh, if you twist it between your finger, uh, it's smooth, but clay, is, because it, it is very small particles, so the clay particle is very sticky. So if a soil has a, a relatively high proportion of sand, then this soil is very uh, gritty soil and maybe it will have a larger soil pores. But if a soil has a relatively higher proportion of clay particles, then this soil may uh, very sticky and the soil pore size may be very small and um, it, have a, it will have a, uh, another uh, different kind of properties. So the portion, so the minerals, um, because the soil mineral particles are, uh, have different size and uh, the minerals is comes from the weathering of rocks and dust. So um, due to the formation processes, the soil minerals can be divided into two kinds. The first is uh, called primary minerals. These minerals means uh, the one have persisted with little change in composition since they were extruded in molten lava. So the minerals is formed by molten lava. After the um, rock from, uh, formed, then the uh, rock is start its uh, weathering. So during the weathering process, if the mineral have little change in its position, then this mineral is called primary mineral. And this mineral is prominent in the sand and sealed fractions of soils and contain many of the nutrient elements needed by plants. 
But if during the weathering process the mineral composition um have very large、uh, change, then these minerals called secondary minerals. So it's formed by the breakdown and weathering of less resistant minerals as soil formation proceed progressed. And secondary minerals are dominant, uh, in the clay. So the clay particles are mostly secondary minerals, but sand and silt are mostly, uh, primary primary minerals. Just now, just now we have talked that the、uh, soil mineral particles are,、uh, they have they are not the same size. They have different size, and sand, silt, and clay. The proportion of particles in these different size ranges is described by soil texture. So the proportion of particles are different. Then the soil texture will be different. And the soil texture can be named by sandy loam or silty clay or clay loam, depend on the proportion for each size of the particles. So texture, soil texture is a very important physical、uh, property for soil. And it affects the su-、uh, suitability of a soil for most use. Um. So to understand the degree to which soil property can be influenced by texture, just um imagine some basin first on a sandy bench, which uh is shown by the left picture. And then, uh, some basin on a clay bench, which shown by the right, uh, picture. So, for both um kind of uh soil texture, um, so if you are some basin on these um soils, so uh, how Are you feeling? We which one do you prefer? You prefer the sandy, uh, bench or the clay bench? I prefer the sandy bench. It looks clean. <laughs> right. So, so the sandy bench is preferred, right? So this is、uh, influenced by the different kind of soil texture because the clay sandy. Uh, the clayey soil is very sticky. So if you are some basin on this kind of soil, then I think you will just stuck in the mud, right? So it is not very good. Okay, so the the upper um picture uh is just shows the different kind of uh different size of the uh. Mineral particles, uh, which was observed under electroscope. So the first thing is sand, which looks very large particles, and the middle is silt, which is much smaller, and then it's clay, which is much much smaller. So you can see that, uh, between the sand particles, there. Is very large pores, but between silt particles, the pore size is a bit small. But between clay particles, the pore size is very very small. We can even not recognize with our our eye. So if the sand silt clay proportion are different, then that means the pore size, uh. Of the soil, uh, of the soils are, uh, will be very different. So different soil texture will have different 
pore size. So among those three different sizes of mineral particles, the cans of clay as well as amount, the clay amount present affect the way a soil will behave. That means although sand sealed clay could exist in the soil, but the most um, important particle which has the largest influence to the property of the soil is the clay. So the kind of clay and the and the amount of clay will affect the way a soil will behave. So if a soil has a, a high amount of smectite clays, it's a kind of clay. We will introduce this one uh, in the following chapter. So smectite clay. Um, if the soil have very have a uh, very high amount of uh, smectite clay, then this uh, soil would not be a stable material on which to build because the uh, smectite clay swell when wet and shrink when dry. So this shrink swell uh, action can easily crack foundations, uh, foundations and cause remaining walls to collapse just shown by the below two pictures so if we um, use the soil uh, to build uh, with a very high amount of uh, smectite clays then the road or the walls will be destroyed um, very soon because of the swell and the shrink processes and also, if the soil with very high amount of clay, the soil will be very sticky and difficult to work with when uh, they are uh, wet. So other types of clay formed under different conditions can be very stable and easy to work with. So there. Uh, different kinds of clay particles. If it's uh, smectite clay, then it's not stable. But if mm, other there there are uh, there are still some other kind of clays, and um, which is much stable and easy to work with. So learning about the different types of clay minerals will help to understand many of the physical and chemical differences among soils. So here you guys should know that the soil is consist of different size of mineral particles and the each particle has its own property and the proportion of each uh, size of mineral uh, particles will affect the soil properties. So this is soil texture. The second property I want to uh, introduce is the soil structure. So soil structure is the way of sand, silt, and clay particles as associated together in aggregates of various size and shapes. So we know that the soil is consist of sand, silt, and clay. And how sand, silt, and clay associated with each other, um, and this will form different shapes of soil structure. So the soil structure is including two aspects. The first is size. Uh, for example, it's small size or medium size or large size and the shapes. Um, it's also, uh, for, for example, it's plen plenty, 
uh, soil structure or its granular soil structure or its blocky soil structure or its prismatic or columnar columnar soil structure. So this is the size and the shape to describe a soil structure, such as its small platy structure. So this is platy structure, uh, which can be seen on the soil surface if the soil is very compaction, maybe by some tractors, maybe um, by some other machines. Um, if the if the soil have been compact by those machines, it will form a platy soil structure on the soil surface. And for this one, it's called a incolumnar soil structure, which can be found uh, in a, uh, maybe alkaline soil, B horizon, and this one as a blocky, which is uh, is very common for B horizon. Okay, the third soil property is soil organic matter. So. Here, I just give you a very brief introduction on those properties, and I will uh, talk to more with uh, the following chapters about these properties. So this is uh, soil organic matter. Soil organic matter uh, means uh, the organic substance, including living organisms, uh, carbonaceous uh, remains of organisms and organic compounds produced by current and past um, metabolism in the soil. So soil organic matter must um, carbonaceous and it must be organic compounds in the soil. So this picture shows carbon cycling among the ecosystem. The carbon exchange between the atmosphere and the soil. So first of all, the plants will absorb carbon uh, as CO2 uh, from the atmosphere to form their own tissues like the leaves, the branches, or the roots. And after these tissues dead, these organic remains will be added into the soil. And then the microbe decomposition will start. So microbe decomposition will transform these organic compounds or organic remains into inorganic uh, forms like translate transform some organic compounds to co2 and uh, h2o and the co2 will be released immediately from the soil to the atmosphere and the remains will stay in the soil as organic matter. And at the same time, the root, the microbe, the litter will have respiration processes which also release CO2 to the atmosphere. So the, uh, the difference between the absorb, the CO2 absorption and the CO2 release is a net ecosystem carbon exchange. If under conditions that favor plant production more than microbial decay, large quantity of atmospheric 
CO2 used by plants in photosynthesis are sequestered in the plant tissues and become part of the soil organic matter after the death. Since carbon dioxide is a major greenhouse gas to warm Earth's climate, the balance between accumulation of soil organic matter and its use through microbial respiration has global implications. In fact, more carbon is stored in the world's soil than in the world's plant biomass and atmosphere combined. So sometimes we think, okay, so carbon uh, is mostly be uh, stored in the atmosphere and uh, plant biomass, but actually it's not. Soil is the largest carbon pore in the ecosystem, and the um, carbon uh, amount, the amount of carbon stored in the soil is higher than the um, than the plant biomass and atmosphere combined. So that's why a lot of scientists um, do their research or studied the soil organic matter because the global warming um, and climate change. The, to store the atmospheric CO2 in the soil as soil organic matter is a uh, way to um, uh, to deal with the global warming or climate change. So the soil scientists, what the soil scientists want to do is to store more carbon in soil and make the carbon more stable in the soil, which means make the carbon stay longer and longer in the soil and prevent to become CO2 because if the carbon is uh, transformed to CO2, then it will be released to the atmosphere to increase the concentration of the CO2 in the atmosphere. So the importance of the soil organic matter even so, organic matter comprises only a small fraction of the mass of a typical soil. So we'll go back to this to this um, picture. It's a volume composition of a low surface soil. So from this uh, picture, we can see that the organic um, fraction is only occupied five. 5% of the solid, which means the organic, so organic matter really comprises only a small fraction. But a small fraction have a very important function to soil. So first, soil organic matter binds mineral particles into a granular soil structure. So granular soil structure is a very good structure for the soil. It's better than the uh, laminar soil structure or blocky soil structure because granular soil structure makes the soil loose and easily managed and it's a uh, productivity soil. The second um, function is that the soil organic matter increases the amount of water a soil can hold and the proportion of water available for plant growth. The reason um, is that the soil organic matter is a a uh, combined material to it can combine the sand sealed clay together with a very suitable 
soil pore size and pattern. Uh, here the pattern means a large pore, medium pore, or small pore. So if a soil with uh, so if a soil uh, have uh, if the pore of soil is mostly large soil pore, this soil cannot hold water. And because of, if the pore size is large, the soil the, the, the water cannot be held within the pores, and the pores is mostly for air flow. But if the soil pore is too small, then the soil uh, pore is uh, used to hold water, but this water have very low use efficiency because some of the root is too large to come into this small size and cannot touch the water. So if the root cannot touch the water, then it cannot absorb this water. So the water use efficiency is very low. As long as the pore size distribution is suitable, like um, both large, medium, and small uh, size of soil pores are coexistent and the proportion is uh, very suitable, then this soil will hold uh, water and allow the air flow within the pores, which means the soil is very, uh, have water and air both. So if soil organ matter content is high, then the soil will form a better soil structure and the soil pore size and pattern are very good. So the soil can hold more water. And at the same time, soil organic matter is a hydrophilic uh, colloid, which means the soil organic matter itself can absorb water. So this is why uh, more soil organic matter content and more water the soil can hold. The third importance is the, uh, that the soil organic matter is a major source of the plant nutrient, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So the nitrogen, phosphorus, and the sulfur are stored in soil as organic forms, but plant cannot use organic form of nutrients directly. Plant roots can only use the nutrients in inorganic forms. So the nutrient can be stored as organic forms, but if the plant want to use them, it needs a microbial decomposition process. The microbial decomposed these organic forms of nutrients to inorganic forms. The nit nitrate nitrogen or ammonium nitrogen and the plant roots can use. So it's a it's kind of nutrient uh, pores um, for uh, the soil organic man, organic matter is a kind of nutrient pores. And the last one is soil organic matter is the main food that supplies carbon and and energy to soil organisms. So this is very important because without the soil organic matter, the microbial activity will be stopped because they do not have enough uh, food, enough energy to use. But you know, just a lot of soil processes is uh, mediated by microbes. So if soil organic matter content is very low, that, that means 
the microbial activity might be very low for this soil and the nutrient release or organic uh, matter forms process will be very slow. This is importance for soil organic matter. Um, there are other aspects, but I just list four of these here. I will give more um, uh, introduction in the following chapters on the soil organic matter. So this is a famous experiment. And this experiment um, shows how soil organic matter important to the ecosystem. This experiment called Biosphere 2 uh, experiment. I, I don't know if you guys have heard that this before or not. Um, it is an American Earth System Science Research Facility located in Arizona. So it's located in Arizona in America. And this experiment was originally used to demonstrate the viability of closed eco ecological systems to support and maintain human life in outer space as a substitute for Earth's biosphere. So we know that there are increasing population on the Earth and the resources are decreased year by year. So people want to find another um, uh, place to stay. Uh, so they set up this experiment to see if people can survive within a closed uh, ecological system. So within this uh, closed uh, ecological system, there are seven uh, area um, which which are the rainforest, the ocean, the wetlands, the grassland, uh, the desert, agricultural system, and a human habitat with living space, labor uh, laboratories, and workshops. So there are seven. Um, Biome areas. So these are the ecosystems on the Earth: the the rainforest, the ocean, the wetland, the desert. Uh, this is the rainforest here. This is the ocean. This is the wetlands. This is the desert, and this is agricultural system. And these are the human habitat with living space laboratories and workspace, workshop. So in our uh, opinions, this ecosystem will access, uh, will success because it uh, includes all the ecosystems on the earth. But after mm, two years, the experiment uh, field because the oxygen uh, concentration is too low for human to survive within this closed uh, ecological system. Mm, so one of the explanation is that because humans have to plant crops for themselves and so for this agricultural system, um, soil is um, uh, made by some peat because peat is a kind of organic uh, matter. It's organic soil, and organic soil we have learned that it has uh, it, it is a nutrient uh, element poor, so which means the soil is rich of nutrients and have high productivity and people will have a uh, high crop yield with this kind of on this kind of soil and can uh, feed themselves well but 
people have have ignored the fact that the peat minerals is um is a organic matter. So after the peat soil is set up in this ecosystem, the microbes have start their decomposition, which means the microbes will use the oxygen within this closed ecological system and produce CO2 and released to the atmosphere. And at the same time, the human also use oxygen and release CO2. And after uh, two years, the, the CO2 concentration is higher, becomes higher and higher, and oxygen decreased very, to be a very low uh, level. It fell, uh, it fell uh, down to 40.5%, uh, which began at 20.9%. So the 40.5% means um, the oxygen is equivalent to the oxygen availability at an elevation of 4,080 uh, meters. So the oxygen concentration is quite low. So humans um, felt uh, very uncomfortable under this um, circumstance. So this experiment is failed. And the reason is um, mostly uh, because of the soil organic matter decomposition. So soil organic matter is very important to our ecosystem and it influences our ecosystem uh, very, very big. So the next, the next soil property is the soil water. So soil water and the soil air all filled in the soil pores. Uh, actually, uh, within the soil, it's not a pure water. It is a solution because um, the, the soil water contains small but significant quality, uh, quantity of uh, soluble organic and inorganic substance, including the plant nutrients. So some soluble plant nutrients can uh, dissolve in the water. So it's not, a, uh, so strictly speaking, it's not a water, it's a solution. It's called soil solution. So the soil solids, um, particularly the fine organic and inorganic colloidal particles, release nutrients elements to the soil solution. So do you still remember the colloidal particles that we introduced um, in former class, colloid, colloidal particles? Which particles have the colloidal uh, properties, do you still remember? Well, in soil, it's it, the colloidal particles um, refers to the clay and humors, the clay particle, which is the smallest particle for the mineral of the mineral particles, because it's very small, so it has a, very, a relatively large surface area. So clay is a kind of colloid uh, particles. 
and another is a humerus. Humerus is a kind of organic matter, soil organic matter. And um, so clay and humerus are colloid particles, and this can release nutrients uh, elements to the soil solution. Because the colloid particle surface uh, 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 attracted a lot of uh, ions um, with a positive charge, like the calcium, the potassium, uh, the 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 uh, uh, phosphorus, and others uh, like the uh, sodium. So those ions are uh, have positive charge and can be attracted on the surface of the colloid uh, particles because colloid particles have negative charge. So the positive uh, cations can be released to the solution. And uh, this, this nutrients, this uh, positive cations uh, can be uh, used or absorbed by plant roots. Mm, so studies have shown that the composition of soil solution would not change too much even when compounds are added or removed from the soil. So this means the soil solutions have a ability to resist on the uh, the compound uh, added or removed. So this ability called soil buffering capacity. The ability to resist change is termed the soil buffering capacity and is dependent on many chemical and biological reactions, including the attraction and release of substance by colloidal particles. Because of the, uh, the process of attraction and release of uh, cations by colloidal particles, the soil has buffering capacity. So on the surface of the colloid particles, they are, um, uh, have they have uh, the they have the hydrogen ions and the alkalinity ions. Uh, the 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 hyd hydra hyd uh, hydroxyl hydroxyl ions the uh, hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. So if the soil solution have uh, received uh, hydrogen ions from outside, then a lot, uh, some of the hydrogen ions will be attract, uh, attracted onto the surface of the colloid particles. But if there are hydroxyl ions uh, added into the soil solution, then Mm, part of the hydroxyl ions will be attracted onto the surface of the colloid particles. So with this process, the soil has buffering capacity. And soil buffering capacity controls soil chemical and biological reactions. Mm, the, uh, which is uh, showing with pH of the soil. So the, the, the acidity or alkalinity um, of soil can be shown by pH. So pH is a logarithmic uh, scale used to express the degree of soil acidity or alkalinity. The pH is considered a master variable that influences most chemical processes in the soil. Because some of the 
uh, microbes, some of the microbes are uh, influenced uh, by pH, like the fungi. The fungi is prefer acidity uh, environment. But some bacteria, they prefer um, uh, net, mm -hmm. neutral or alkalinity environment. So the pH will influence the soil microbial community composition and then will affect some soil reactions. Uh, okay, we, we will have 10 minutes rest and then we will uh, talk about soil air. Okay, let's continue. So the next soil property is the soil air. So soil air and soil water all stored in the soil pores. Just like the picture, the left picture shows. Um, so there are plant roots within the soil and the root penetrate within the soil, which can form continuous uh, soil pores. After the roots dead, is died, and uh, the, the root uh, remains will be decomposed by the microbes, and but the soil pores will be stayed there for air or water flow. So the if we think of the network of soil pores as a, a ventilation system of the soil connecting air spaces to the atmosphere, we can understand that wind pores are filled with water in ventilation system uh, becomes clogged. That means if the soil pores are fully filled with water, then the ventilation system will become uh, clogged, just like uh, you stayed in a windowless classroom and if uh, think how stuffy the air would become if the ventilation ducts of the windowless classroom became clogged. So uh, it, it, it is like live under the dome. So the right picture shows. Uh, so under the dome, I don't know how many of you have uh, watched this drama before it called under the dome uh it it is a drama about uh, a group of people just was covered their uh, uh, village was covered by a dome and they don't do not have any other choice but under uh, just live under the dome so because of the uh, dome the people are um separated uh, with the outside world and uh, the air uh, uh, exchange becomes a problem. So um, with time, the oxygen concentration will decrease and ox uh, carbon oxide uh, will increase. So people think about many uh, ways to uh, you know get fresh oxygen for survive so if the soil pores was fully filled with water then it's just the uh, microbes or animals or plant roots lives just like the human under the dome so air is very important to the uh, to the soil and the organisms living within the soil. So the soil air differs from atmospheric air in several respects. 
The first is the composition of soil air varies greatly from place to place in the soil. This is because the soil is um, uh, it's, it is a um, non-uniform uh, material and in local pockets, some gases are consumed by plant roots and by microbial reactions and others are released, thereby greatly modifying the composition of the soil air. So the composition of air uh, varies greatly from place to place. If a place with a high amount of microbes, then maybe the CO2 concentration is high, very, very high uh, than other places. The second respect is soil air greatly, uh, generally has a higher moisture content than the atmosphere. The relative humidity of soil air approaches 100% unless the soil is very dry. So the water vapor and um, the liquid water, they have a balance. If the water vapor pressure decreases, uh, the liquid water will uh, transform the two water vapor to, uh, uh, and uh, then the, to make the water vapor pressure uh, stable. So the relative uh, humidity of soil air approaches 100%. Um, unless the soil is very dry, like in some dry, very dry area, uh, uh, such as a desert, maybe the humidity of soil air cannot reach to 100%. But other areas, the, the, the humidity of soil air will keep uh, 100%. The third respect is the content of carbon dioxide is usually much higher and that of oxygen lower than contents of these gases found in the atmosphere. So we have talked uh, a lot about this, why the, the soil have higher CO2 concentration and lower uh, oxygen concentration than the atmosphere. That's because the root and the microbial respiration, which uh, consume oxygen and uh, reduce and uh, produce CO two, but the exchange between the soil and atmosphere is not uh, that quickly to make the uh, the concentration of CO two and oxygen the same as uh, atmosphere. So that's why the, the uh, concentration have different between soil and atmosphere. So the amount and composition of air in a soil are determined to a large degree by the water content of the soil. So this is because both air and water are filled in the soil pores. If water increased, then the air will decrease. And if air increased, then the water will decrease. When water enters the soil, it displays air from some of the pores. There are different sizes of pores in the soil, as I talked before, uh, large size pores. Uh, medium sized pores and small sized pores. As the soil drains from a heavy rain or irrigation, large pores are the first to be filled with air. Because a large pores is used for air flow and water cannot be held in the large pores. So large pores are the first to be filled with air followed by medium-sized pores, and finally the small pores, as water is removed by evaporation and plant use. 
So soil pool, uh, soil air is uh, it have an equal importance with water in the soil. Okay, so after we uh, learned uh, some of the soil properties, then we'll uh, learn something about the soil health, degradation, and the resilience. So soil is a renewable resource, but not uh, uh, it's a reusable resource, but not a renewable resource in the scale of human lives. Uh, that's because most soil profiles are thousands of years in the making. So that means the soil formation um, process is very slow. So maybe after thousands of years, um, the, the, uh, start from the rock weathering and some uh, processes happen, then the soil forms on the uh, surface of the rock. But a human's lifetime may be only 100, about 100 years. So in the scale of human lifetime, the, the soil is not a renewable resource. It's limited resource. In all regions of the world, human activities are destroying some soils far faster than nature can rebuild them. So the destroy rate is much faster than the nature can rebuild them. Growing numbers of people are demanding more and more ecosystem services. Like people uh, want to get uh, enough food and they cut off trees and uh, plant crops on the soil, in, in the, on the soil. Or people drainage wetlands um, for crop production. So all these activities destroy some soils very fast. In most parts of the soil, nearly all of the soils best suited for growing crops are already being farmed. So people have cultivated the soil. Almost all the soils are, have been cultivated, which is suitable for agriculture. Therefore, as each year brings many more people to feed the amount of cropland per person continuously decline. So this picture shows people cut off forest and then pillage, tilled uh, to grow crops. All people destroyed the grassland and changed the grassland to agricultural land. All um, people changed the um, savannas to the cropland. So all these human activities destroy the ecosystem because when we change the uh, land use management or land use type, it will affect the soil properties and some pro soil processes. Or, uh, and some of the activity may accelerate soil organic matter decomposition, which will uh, increase atmospheric CO2 concentration. So these activities just have bad uh, influence on soil quality. The soil quality 
is a measure of the ability of a soil to carry out particular ecological functions reflects a combination of chemical, physical, and biological properties. So human um, activity might um, uh, decrease the soil quality. And the so soil quality, it, it means uh, it's this ability of soil to carry out particular ecological functions. So the function has been uh, destroyed. And the function can be reflected uh, uh, by some uh, properties, like some relatively unchangeable property and a changeable property by management. So if we want to study the soil quality um, change, we need to choose the changeable uh, property by management, such as uh, the soil structure, soil organic matter. And those pictures uh, show the soil degradation and the resilience. The first the two uh, picture is a topsoil lost. Uh, the left one was uh, taken in a sloped fruit uh, fruitland, and the second, uh, the right one, uh, was taken in the uh, northwest, uh, northeast uh, region of China, the black soil. So we can see that there are a lot of uh, gully. Uh, under the uh, surface of the soil, which is uh, um, eroded by uh, water because uh, the um, bared soil surface. So, the soil degradation uh, the first uh, type of soil degradation is topsoil loss. And another widespread cause of soil degradation is the accumulation of salts mm -hmm. in improperly irrigated soils in arid region, just like the uh, left uh, below pictures shows the salt accumulation on the soil surface. If the salt concentration is very high, then uh, some of, most of the plants cannot be growing on this, this kind of uh, soil, which means the soil quality uh, is, is destroyed. And the contamination of the soil with toxic substances uh, from industrial processes or chemical spills can degrade its capacity to provide habitat for soil organisms to grow plants that are safe to eat or to safely recharge ground and surface waters, just like the picture shows by the uh, right, uh, the, the right uh, below ones, the soil contamination. And the soil contamination is, is a wide, uh, worldwide problem because of the uh, pesticide uh, uh, application or uh, too much the overload uh, for chemical uh, fertilization or uh, the contaminated irrigated water. So the soil has been contaminated and it's, it becomes not safe for both organisms and humans. While protecting soil quality must be the first priority, it's often necessary to attempt to restore the quality of soils that have already been degraded. Some soils have sufficient resilience to recover from minor degradation if left to regeneration on its own. So if, if a soil has a very slight degradation, then maybe it can recover by itself. 
but most cases is that the soil need our help to restore degrade the soil. When people cultivate soil and harvest the crops without returning organic residuals and mineral min uh, nutrients, the soil supply of organic matter and nutrients becomes depleted. Organic and inorganic amendments may have to be applied. Vegetation may have to be planted or contaminants uh, may have to be removed. The job of soil restoration uh, requires in deep knowledge of all aspects of the soil system. So doing the uh, resilience of soil or to um, assess the soil degradation degree, we need uh, soil knowledge. So uh, this as a, a content for the chapter one, and for the next class, we will have a video which uh, named Deep Down and Dirty of the Science of Soil. So with this video, I give you guys four questions. So after we stay uh, complete uh, watching the video, you should answer those four questions and submit the answers to me. Got it? So this video will last for one, uh, about one and a half uh, credit hours. And then you have uh, half credit hours to finish the questions and submit. So this is uh, uh, the, the task for next Monday morning's work. Do you, do you have any questions for mm -hmm. next uh, Monday morning's uh, assignment or for the uh, knowledge that we learned today? Yeah, well, yeah Shay, got... um, this is Christian. Mm -hmm. yeah. In in regards to the assignment, uh, the deep down and dirty of sun soul video, mm -hmm. are you going to share it? us or do we have to find yeah, this ourselves? I will show I will show you oh okay thank you okay and then other questions yes Lao mm -hmm. yeah I'm sorry I want to know when are we going to submit the assignment what after, date after the class the, uh, the next Monday morning class, when the next uh, when the class is over, then you need to submit the uh, answers. So yeah, are we going to send it to your email or? Uh, so WeChat? you can send me by email or just send me uh, by the WeChat. It's okay. So written in a Word file in a word file and then send it to me. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if you guys do not have any questions, then Today's class is over, so I'll see you guys next Monday morning. Okay. Okay, Lao Xi. Okay, Lao Xi. Yeah. yeah. Bye.